Hey everybody, this tutorial concerns Tuesday's homework. Uh, that would be page 31, numbers 1, 2, and 9 through 11 in our comparing and scaling books. I just wanted to point out a few key concepts that you're going to be, going to want to be keen on before you do this homework assignment. Of course, I, I feel that all of you could probably figure this out on your own, but this will give you a little boost if you need a uh, bit of a hint. So I'm going to start by looking at number one with you now. I'm not going to do it for you, but I do want to point this out. If you've read number one, it talks about Miriam and how she learned to use a pottery wheel. She can make three bowls in two hours. The neat thing here is we could say three bowls in two hours, although not being the same thing, do compare uh, and, and actually kind of, kind of, we could say are equivalent to one another in the respect that, you know, if you have one, you have the other. So you'll notice how I've written this, of course. I've written it as a ratio. I've compared this. I said three bowls to two hours. So, you know, if she can make three bowls every two hours, the primary question here was this. Uh, how long would it take her to make a set of 12 bowls? Look, here's what I know. I know that there, the goal here is 12 bowls. The big question is this. How many, how many hours would it take her to do this? Well, you know, the easiest way to do this is to look for a scale factor. Here's what I'm going to encourage you to do. Look for a scale factor either between 2 and 3 or 3 and 2 and 12 in this question mark or X or whatever it is that you write or between 3 and 12. It's pretty apparent, but you should be able to tell me how many hours it would take her. As a matter of fact, if you wanted to challenge yourself, this has nothing to do with the homework. Um, what if uh, she was making seven bowls? Uh, this is just a bonus, but if you wanted to challenge yourself, how many hours would it take her to make seven bowls? This is kind of a good question. I would ask you to find a scale factor from three to seven, or from two to three, or three to two. You know, do it up. See what you get. Now, going to number nine. Number nine is a direct copy of the investigation that we've been doing in class Monday and Tuesday this week, which involves mixing orange drink, okay? So here's the deal. They change it. They just call it apple juice. But you notice that they write four different mixes here. Mix W, X, Y, and Z. Here's what I will do. I will actually start on mix W with you. You notice here it's delicious looking. Um, I know, but on number nine, you've got two parts of this problem. It says, if you made a single batch of mixed W, what fraction of that batch would be concentrate? Okay, so here's the deal. I figured the best way to look at this is to draw a picture. Now here's what I know. Looking at mixed W, it says three cups concentrate, okay, and four cups H2O. Now here's what they don't tell you, and of course they don't really need to tell you, but we know that there are three cups concentrate, and if I want to write this as a fraction, I kind of need to know that, but out of how many total cups are in the thing? Well, if there are three cups of concentrate and four cups of water, how many total cups are in this thing? Of course, the answer is seven. So, you know, already on 9A, we've kind of broken through. We said, well, if I'm going to write this as a fraction, I know that out of seven total cups, how many are concentrate? Now, without looking at the picture, I could tell you three at this point, but I did want to draw a picture. So here's what we could do, and to the best of my ability, and of course, your ability, you can do this as well. I do believe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven total cups. Here's what we could do. We could say concentrate, concentrate, concentrate. Water, 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 water. Of course, if you're having a hard time reading this, I know there's a glare on the board. It says H2O. But I'm looking at this, and it's the same as the type of bellwork stuff we've been doing. I say, how much of this total seven is shaded in? And we know that three out of these seven. So here's our fraction, okay? So 9A, it's concerning, you know, it says which fraction of each mixture is concentrate. Well, for mixed double, W, you could say three out of the seven cups are concentrate. And that will take care of mixed W for part A. Now, you need to do this for every single mixture. But part B, which is really cool because we've already done this on another homework assignment, says please rewrite your answer as a percent. Look, if I want to turn this into a percent, two things we can do this. <coughs> two ways we can do this, excuse me. Um, our ambition might be to turn this bottom number into 100. Look, if it was out of 100, it would automatically be a percentage. And the other tack that we've used in the past is to actually divide the numerator by the denominator. We probably are getting sick of this by now, but it's actually a really useful thing to do. So here's what we'll do. We'll take the 3, if the dividend that goes inside the box, and we'll divide it by 7. Of course, we knew we were going to get a decimal. 7 does not go into 3. So what we're looking for is this number out to the hundredth spot, if we possibly can. But I do know that 7 goes into 30, and it goes in 4 times, okay? Because 4 times 7 is 28. Now, subtracting this, I know that I have 2 left over, but I can demonstrate that we would borrow from this 3 and make it a 2. 10 minus 8 is 2. This becomes 0. 
And at this point, since I have a remainder, I would have to continue dividing. Now, I know that this becomes 20 now. I say 7 goes into 20 twice. Now, that's 14, leaving behind 6. I'm going to keep going only for one reason. Because if I want a percentage, I want to round this percentage off to the nearest hundredth, which requires me to look at that decimal to the right-hand side of the hundredth spot. So the last question is this, and maybe we don't want this exactly, but I'd say, how many times does 7 go into 60? Okay, here's what I know. It goes in 8 times. 8 times 7 is 56. That would fit. But here's the cool thing about it. Looking at this and rounding off to the nearest hundredth, this is by far bigger than 5. 5 or bigger. So I say this is 8. Here's what I can tell you. 3 sevenths is approximately 43% concentrate. Now here's the neat thing about it because on number 10 they're going to move on and say, which batch was the most amply? Okay? Of course it's going to be the batch that has the most concentrate in it. I mean, imagine you had six cups of concentrate and one cup of water. You're going to be drinking syrup or at least it's going to seem that way and some people are weird and they like that but you know what? Here's the thing. Okay? You're going to express every single mixture as this many cups of concentrate out of this many total cups in the batch. Once you turn these all into percents, we know that it's awesome to compare things that have been made percentages. It's really hard to compare things that are out of different amounts. Looking at all these mixtures, even mix X, if you're looking at that, you notice that's out of 8 cups. How are you going to compare something that's out of 8 cups to something that's out of 7 cups? Look, we'll use a percent because percent levels the playing field by making these all out of 100. So if I were going to make a batch of mixed W and use 100 cups of everything, 43-ish of those cups out of those total 100 would be concentrated. So what it's going to ask you to do is find the most aptly, you want the highest percent of concentrate. Now I don't know if it's mixed W, X, Y, or Z. I haven't done this complete problem on my own yet. Now part 11 of this problem, if you read it, it says, or at least it wants to know, it says if you made only one cup of mixed W, of course we know that it takes seven cups with this original recipe, but if we made only one cup of mixed W, how much water and how much concentrate would you need to use? Well think about this as being the one cup. Okay, so I say one cup is this entire thing. So now I look at this and I say, well, here's what I know. <coughs> Excuse me. Three-sevenths of this entire cup needs to be concentrate. So the cool part of this is the answer to this is that. Hey, three-sevenths of this cup needs to be concentrate and four-sevenths needs to be water. Okay, so here's the cool thing about these problems. This is for mixed W. I have no problem telling you that the answer for number 11, at least for mixed W, is three-sevenths of a cup. Once you find this fraction, though, of the entire amount that is concentrate for each one of these, which is what you did in part 9A, this fraction happens to be the answer for each batch of, of each different type here of mix for number 11. So, hey, um, there's kind of a gift for you. You can just kind of have the answers there. Once you find that out, you've got number 11 made. Good luck.